promises or the better than I could dream Lord, your ways are wonderful You have always been good to me Sing it out! More than I could ask for More than I could think More than I imagined Imagined, imagined Lord, you made it happen You can do all this Just as you imagined
Welcome to everybody who is also tuning in online. Um, and every week, the, we're going to be heading into worship again in a bit, but every week in our church, we want to create space for prayer. We want to create space for prayer because we believe in the power of prayer. And I was just, I just had this one line repeating in my head um, a while ago because all of us, when we come in, we, we carry baggage. It can be a good baggage, like, yay, I had the most amazing week. But it can also be like really tough, heavy stuff. Heavy stuff that we carry. And a lot of times, I, I'm just thinking about my backpack, which is honestly really heavy sometimes. And I, I put it on and it, it's difficult to move. But I was just thinking of this whole line. Like when, when I move, okay, I move. But when I pray, it's God who moves. And so I just want to encourage you today, whatever it is that you are bringing. One of my favorite verses in the world, Psalms, 100, uh, Psalms 57 verse 2, it says, I cry out to God most high, to God who accomplishes all things for me. And so everything that God calls us to do, He will also accomplish through you. So you're not alone in this. And we want to open up this space for prayer. Because when, when we move, okay, we move. But when we pray, it's God who moves. And who do you want moving in your life? Do you want just yourself? Or do you want a supernatural, all-powerful, amazing creator of the universe? Somebody so big, but somebody who loves you and me so much to move. I want that God to move and so we would love to invite you to the front or to the sides by the blue lights for prayer and if you if there's a physical healing that you are believing for we want to invite you to this side of the stage because our leaders will anoint you with oil like it says in the Bible and we're gonna believe and speak healing over you so if that's you would you start to come forward don't be shy come forward and we're going to believe, each and every one of us, that God is going to move in your situation. For the, for the rest of us, can we lift our hands up and pray? God, we just surrender to you our, our limited, our, our, our limit, limited selves. And we believe that you are a limitless God. So right now, Lord, we surrender to you whatever this is. And we're believing that in prayer, as we speak, as we declare, Lord God, as we trust and have faith, you are going to move. We believe, Lord Jesus, we're not walking out of this place without an encounter with you, God. We believe you're going to move. We know you're going to move, Lord. And so we bless 
this time, Lord, we lift your name up. We thank you, God, that you are the God who accomplishes all things for us. We love you. In your name we all said, amen and amen. Come on, if that's you and if you need prayer, would you come forward? And for the rest of us, let's worship.
We praise you, Jesus. There is a name that defies the grave. My flesh may fail, so my hope remains. And when it's time to enter heaven's gate, I'll finally hear the Savior call my name. And on that day, I'll see you I will bow before you, Jesus. Oh, we will bow before the King. We will bow before the Lord. We will bow before you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your voice. Give the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the name above every name. King Jesus 
time, can we lift our hands to heaven just all over this place? You're watching online, you can do the same thing. We humble ourselves before you today, Jesus. We thank you that you've saved us, but God, I pray that each one of us would step into a place where you're the Lord of our whole lives. We thank you for saving. But Jesus, would you come and be our Lord? Every area, our thoughts, our finances, our relationships, whatever it is, I pray that the revelation of what it means to truly have you as our Lord come. Rest on us today. We honor you as a church, as individuals, people that represent businesses and schools and families. We honor you, Jesus, above all things today. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, I really want to encourage you. I, uh, I want to give as much time to our preacher today, but I just want to encourage you that be very careful about the words that you sing in church because what we all just sung beautifully you are the Lord you're the Lord of my life if you truly mean those words and if God can allow you to have the revelation of what that means it will affect every single thing you do Lord is not just a title of Jesus not just one of the names it's the function that he has in our lives. Lordship. He's the Lord of everything. And so I want to encourage you. Be careful about what you sing. Because he might just come knocking on areas in your life where he wants to be the Lord of. And where he needs to be the Lord of. So I pray that you and I would have the humility to allow him to come in. Shape us. Shift us. Rock us. Whatever we need to do to allow him to truly be the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn to the person next to you and just say, you look so wonderful today. You can grab your seats. Welcome to everybody that's watching online. If uh, we've never met before, my name's James. I'm on the team here at Favor Church. And we're going to continue worshiping God by praying for our tithes and our offerings. We don't pass the buckets around in our church. Uh, we encourage people to give online. It's the easiest way, the details. If you're watching online, they're on the screen. Or if you, you can go to give.favor.church. If you do want to give cash, there's a white envelope in the seat in front of you. Or maybe you're sitting on it if you have no seat in front of you. And you can give in our secured giving station out in the hallway or in the uh, foyer outside. But if you've given today, or this week, this month, whenever it is, uh, come on, why don't you put your hand on your heart and we're gonna pray for it right now. Lord, we thank you that you are good, that you love us, that you've blessed us with everything that we have. And we just pray that today, this week, this month, as we give, that you would bless it, you would multiply it, Lord God. Lord, we thank you that you would bless us even more to be a greater blessing that we would be conduits of your blessing. So we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Well, it's so great to have you in church today. I'm excited. Uh, today's going to be a really, really good day in church. I'm going to introduce our preacher in just a little bit of time. But uh, if this is your first time that you've ever physically been to Favor Church, we really want to welcome you and make you feel at home here. In fact, we want to give you a gift just to say thank you for coming to church. Standing up all over our auditorium right now, we've got some of our amazing, beautiful VIP team. And in their hand, they've got something uh, we just call a favorite church gift bag. And we got little goodies in there for you. But more importantly, we've got information on our church, who we are, why we do what we do. And so we'd love to get this into your hands today. Uh, so if this is your first time, or maybe you brought someone for the first time, as our team begin to roll through the aisles, could you just stick up your hand, grab their attention, because we want to get these bags into your hands. And come on, Favorite Church, you know what to do. Let's really welcome everyone today for the first time. We still got hands up, and we got hands all the way up in the back corner as well, right up in the back corner, so let's make sure we get some bags to them. It's amazing. 
If you're watching online as well, and it's your first time that you've ever been with us, thank you for coming hanging out with us. Please let us know that you're watching. You can see the description link in the screen right now, or you can go to the description box of whatever platform you're watching or listening from, and we'd love to connect with you, hear a little bit more about your story. Hey, if you just grab one of those bags, inside that bag, we've got a little card that says, Welcome to Favor. At the end of the service, we've got a VIP little section out the front here in our lobby. I would love to connect with you, but if you don't have time to connect today, then you can fill out this little card and stick it in the box or give it to one of our teams and someone this week will get in contact with you because we'd just love to know a little bit more about your story, how you ended up at Favor Church. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about our church or maybe how you can get involved, we'd love to help you with that. Amen. Amen. One more time. Come on. Can we just welcome everybody here for the first time today? So lovely to have you here. Thank you for being with us. We're a pretty friendly church, and so we usually take two minutes every week to stand up on our feet and meet someone we've never, ever met before, particularly all those people that just grabbed those bags. Our host team going to hang candy out all over the auditorium. So come on, why don't we get to your feet right now? We'll put two minutes on the screen. Get some candy on the way by. Meet someone you've never met before. Wonderful. Why don't you grab your seats? We got so many great things happening in our church, and we've got a special announcement of something that we are launching today in our church. So, why don't we check out this week's edition of Favor News? Welcome to this week's edition of Favor News. For all the info and announcements I'm about to mention, visit favor.church slash manila news. Let's go. If you want to grow your love for God's Word and learn how to apply it in your daily life, join our How to Read Your Bible course starting on March 19. Whether you are a new believer who wants to start a Bible reading habit or you've been a Christian for a while and want to have a deeper and correct understanding of the Bible, this Grow course is for you. To sign up, head over to this link. 
Hi everyone! My name is Bethany and I've been with Favor for four long years. I'm Phoebe Delfino, attending Favor Church since 2022. I'm Ian and I've been in Favor since 2023. I want to get baptized because it's an opportunity for me to declare to everyone how God has saved me and redeemed me from my past life. I wanted to publicly declare my faith and a deep relationship to Jesus. No more hiding! I'm all in! I got baptized because I wanted to show who changed my life. It's not just baptism where you're going to be in the water, then you're going to be in the water, but it's declaring as you want to intentionally walk with God and let everyone know that no one is too far away from God. You want to get baptized, now is the perfect opportunity for you to do so. It's the chance to get baptized. Don't be shy. Encouraging everyone, it's never too late. Go! I really want to encourage everyone to get baptized this coming March 31. Nako, magpa-baptize na kayo. Kidding aside, it's happening this March 31, Easter Sunday. Sign up at favor.church slash baptism. See you all, guys. How do I get myself filled with the Holy Spirit? Jesus told us simply, go wait on God. He said, I want you to go into all the world, but whoa, before you go, go and get some power. You can't do what I'm asking you to do unless you've got power on you. You can't win people to Christ. You can't heal the sick. You can't do anything of the New Testament that I'm asking you to do unless you first get yourself filled with the Holy Spirit. Hi, I'm Mia, and I'm from Favor College, Batch 3. I really wanted to see what one full year of being more planted in my church, being more involved in ministry, and just saying yes to for a full year would look like in my life. A year where uh, God was so faithful to me and I had to respond to it with faithfulness too. I'm more patient, I am able to lead my team better, and just see it in many ways that's bearing fruit of the things that I am drawing from the wells that I've built in Favor College as I'm really applying it now in my life. Applications are now open for year one and year two of Favor College. If you want to take a step of faith, grow your capacity and character, and see what God can do in a year, learn more, and apply now. Favor presents the app you've been looking for. A kid's check-in solution, event attendance, and unique identification card for everyone in our church. All in one app. Create an account by signing up. Or log in with your existing Fluoro email. Access your profile. Find your FAM card, the key to effortless check-ins for our unticketed church events. Save it on your phone and use it to check into all of our free events. Calling all our parents and guardians. Checking into Kids Church has never been easier. Access all your children's FAM cards within the Favor app. Easy and efficient. The future of church experience and database management is here. Church for imperfect people, and now apps. Download the Favor app now. Available on the App Store and Google Play Store. Here in Favor, we love celebrating one another's milestones because we're one big family. Congratulations to Mark and Janice who just welcomed baby Noah. And shout out to Pumpkin and Derek, Harold and Kay, and Marco and Mary, who just got married, and to Alvin and Cha, who just got engaged. Woohoo! We love you, fam! There are so many exciting things happening in the life of our church. All the links you need from today's announcements are on favor.church slash manila news, or you can drop by our info booth at the foyer after our service to ask questions, share a testimony, or volunteer for a tea. Stay updated by visiting our website or by following our social media channels popping up on your screen right now. And that is it for our favorite news. Wonderful. Easter's coming up. We're going to be at the Metro Tent at Easter time. We're going to baptize a bunch of people. It's going to be great. And get your fam card. How many of y'all excited about your fam card? I am. If you get your fam card, you get cheaper Starbucks. Go try it. I'm joking. It's not. Listen, today it's our honor and privilege to have 
Pastor Gary Morgan with us. Who here was at our prophetic masterclass yesterday? Yeah, wonderful. Uh, you know, this weekend, I met Pastor Gary for the first time last year. I, I've learned to trust my friends greatly. What's the point of having a great friend if you can't trust them, right? And Pastor Gary's been ministering for years at Pastor Ken Lee's church and, and Pastor Joel Chalaya. And I asked them about Pastor Gary because I was really praying, I'm like, God, I really want to bring just some really anointed prophets into our house to teach on it, to minister. And they told me that this guy was incredible. And last year I met him, I was attending, Kate and I were attending uh, my father-in-law's church for a service and he just so happened to be there. I went up to him, I said, hey, could you pray for me? He prayed for me, gave me a prophetic word, was spot on, didn't know who I was, said the word favor about five times. I just see favor over you. And, uh, and he didn't know we passed a church called Favor. And this weekend hanging out, just being able to get to know him more, he's the real deal. He's a lovely person. He's really kind, but he's sharp. He's prophetic. He really loves Jesus. And I know that today we are going to be really blessed. So Favor Church, come on. Can we stand to our feet? And can we honor and receive the prophet with honor, Pastor Gary Morgan? Wow. Hey, hey. Amen and amen. Come on, God. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Wow. Wow. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Father, we make you famous. Lord, we lift you high. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wow. God is good, amen? Thanks for being with us today. Also as well, those online, welcome. But I, I, guys, I want to begin by just decreeing something in this house. Man, this worship team is something else. And I'm standing there. And the Lord whispers to me, He says, they've seen, now they need to hear. And I see, a, I see guys, I see an album coming out of this house. And, and what I see is literally the album, and I saw the cover, and it says Favored Church, but the album name is Favored. And I saw Favored, and it was literally going to be a story and a song of what the Lord has done in you these last seven, eight years. And I felt like the Lord was bringing such a sound out of this house that it's not going to be a replica. It's not going to sound like, but it's going to be that ax thing that, that Peter said when he stood up. This is that. This is that. And this album is going to be this is that, but it's going to be favored. I just see the word favored. And I also heard like snippets of Pastor James's like words on there of like these truths that have come out of this house that are going to come into like some of them songs and it's almost going to be like this decree there's going to be songs on there that are going to decree that are going to bring breakthrough and I believe are going to bring healing that are going to bring a witness of who God is to the nation of Philippines you see this this nation is not going to be a nation that just receives but it's going to be a nation that sends and I see this house as a launch. I see this house like a launch pad. And I see not just, and I keep hearing them words, they've seen, now they'll hear. They've seen, now they're here. And I believe the first seven years of your, your church was the seeing years, now it's the hearing years. And I believe the Lord is bringing you into a place where you're going to begin to hear a sound. The Bible says in Acts 2, and there was a sound. You see the sound. And I believe there is a sound coming out of this house. And so, guys, I want to encourage you, worship team. This isn't a day of, of competing. It's a day of completing. It's not a day where you compare. It's a day where, where I believe the prophet of the Lord has come into the field to find David. And I feel like the Lord has, has brought me in my heart. I humbly say this. But I feel like I, when I was coming here, I was walking down the hall and I had this vision of me walking in a field. And I'm like, Lord, I'm in the middle of a, a hotel. I'm not in a field. But I felt like the Lord says, you're, you're about to find David. And I believe there's a call of David on this house to raise up the tabernacle of David. 
in the Philippines, to raise up a sound, to raise up a place where people can minister to the Lord, not just for the Lord. That this is a place where the Lord is releasing. And so I want to decree over this house, favored. Favored, what does that say? It doesn't mean what God is doing, it's what means what God has done in this house, that you are favored, that you are favored. And what was impossible is about to become possible. It says that God favored Mary. And I believe that that same narrative is gonna be on this house. What people have said is impossible, all things are possible. What people have said, it'll never be done. I, I love this phrase. Guys, I, I, wanna, I wanna decree this as, a, as an anthem in this house. Those who say it cannot be done shouldn't interrupt those doing it. <laughs> Come on. Those who say it cannot be done shouldn't interrupt those doing it. Amen? Because I'll tell you something, you're doing it. And God is going to reward your faithfulness. Because I'll tell you something, you did it and other people are talking about it. The danger comes is when you're talking about it, but you ain't doing it. I'm telling you, this is a house that is doing it and other people are talking about it. And so I want to encourage you, Favour Church. You are favoured. I see it. I just see that album, Favoured. And, and I want to encourage you. It's not a CD, amen? <laughs> it's not a CD, but I'll tell you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to chart on Spotify. It's going to chart on iTunes, Apple Music. It's going to chart. I'm telling you, God's going to do something in this nation that is phenomenal. Amen. Can we give God an amen in this place? Yay, God. Wow. Why don't we put our hands on our hearts this morning? And I want us to pray a dangerous prayer. Because when we pray this prayer, we're inviting God into our lives. We're inviting the Lord into our hearts. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, speak to my heart and change my life. Father, we just welcome the spirit of wisdom and revelation into this house. Lord, in the knowledge of you, Lord, that you would reveal to us the mysteries. Father, that you would reveal to us truths that would set us free. Father God, the, the baggage we came in, Lord, we would leave with luggage. Father, the, the things that we've been bound in, Lord, we would leave with breakthrough. Father, the things that have troubled us, Lord, we're going to triumph in as we leave this place today. In Jesus' name, when all God's people said, Amen and amen. Thank you guys. You can take your seats. Wow. It is so good to be with you. I have so loved being with uh, Favor Church and, and Pastor James and Kate. You guys are just, yeah, just a breath of fresh air. You know, it's good to be with people who are not different on the stage to what they are off the stage. Same people. And you know, it's just such a, a, an incredible encouragement to my heart. You see, there's a difference between hunger and hype. Hype is the inability to deliver. Hunger is the delivery room of God. And I want to encourage you, friends, I love the hunger that's in this house because hunger is the delivery room of what the Lord wants to do. If you want to see the Lord birth something in your life, get hungry. If you want to see the Lord do something in your life. So, Pastor James and Kate, thank you so much for the incredible honor and invite of being with you today. How many people are ready to get into the Word of God? Guys, today I'm going to share um, something that I, I've been journeying with the last year. How many people know you can't give what you haven't got? And how many people know that, you know, you can't share on something that the Lord isn't doing in your life. You see, God doesn't want concepts. He wants context. And, and we can talk about concepts all day, but I tell you, last year I began a journey where literally we were about to launch our school in 2023, and, and I was coming back from a, a church weekend. Uh, we were ministering there and, and doing a presbytery for their, their staff. And on the way back, the Lord said to me, pause. I'm like, What? Like, what do you mean pause? He said, pause. Not stop, pause. And I love when the Lord speaks because he speaks to me pictorially sometimes. And when all of a sudden he said, pause, I saw literally the symbol for pause. And you know what I love about the symbol of pause? It's two lines that are literally next to each other. And you know what he began to say to me, Gary, I don't want you to stop, I want you to pause. Because when you pause, you come into alignment. I don't want you to pause to stop. I want you to pause to align. 
I think the greatest tragedy in the body of Christ right now is that we don't know how to pause. Another word for pause is Sabbath. Yeah? You see, Sabbath, I don't believe Sabbath is, is just about stopping. I don't believe Sabbath is about, you know, stop. And I believe it's a place of pause and reflect. It's a place where we allow the Lord to step in. It's, it's where my activity ceases, but His activity begins. You see, fasting, and for those who, who have made an Anglican background or a, a church, high church background, we're in Lent right now. And the thing is we've got to understand is, is fasting isn't giving up, it's giving in. And the danger is, is when we think the things of God are about giving up, it's not, it's about giving in. And in this pause time, the Lord says, I need you to step into a place of fasting. And I'm like, Lord, are you trying to say something? You see, my wife says to me, I've got a body like a God. Yeah, Buddha. <laughs> and, you know, it's amazing in that when the Lord said fast, I said, Lord, I, I love my food. Please ask anything else. But fasting, I love food is my love language. Hashtag. And I'm like, I can't give it up. And he began to show me, friends, that fasting is a Sabbath for the body. You're not about giving up. It's about giving in. We're giving in to the plans of purpose. And so I came back from that sort of trip and, you know, I walked in to my pantry thinking, God bless you, I'll see you in a few weeks. And as I opened the cupboard to get something, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just fell. I'm like, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Like what? It, like M and M's. What are M and M's falling out of a cupboard in front of me? It's like temptation central. You've just asked me to fast, and all of a sudden I got M and M's falling out of a cupboard. And I looked at them, and the Lord began to speak to me. And this is what He said. He said, "Gary, I'm taking you into a season of mission and maturity." And my message to you today, friends, it's time for mission and it's time for maturity. And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, and you know, when the Lord speaks, he, he gives you a, a sort of encouragement and then He lays it down. And this is what He said, mission and maturity. It's time to get up and it's time to grow up. And church, I want to encourage you today that we're in a season right now that is requiring us. The Lord is inquiring of us because He's requiring of us to get up and to grow up. I believe mission and maturity is a, is a marker for what the Lord is needing to do in the earth today. That He needs us to get up and He needs to grow up. I want to say right off the bat, friends, COVID can no longer be an excuse. What was isn't what is. And we can't allow it any longer to be an excuse. You see, if you want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. And the Bible is not a book of excuses, it's a book of command. It's a book of invitation. It's a book that leads us into discipleship. And when the Lord began to speak to me about this place of get up and grow up, I realized that the Lord was leading me into a journey. That I was, I was which I think I was, I said to my wife, am, am I good spiritually? She goes, yeah, I think so. Am I good emotionally? She goes, you've been better. I said, what about physically? She goes, no comment. <laughs> and I realized the Lord said to me at that time, and friends, you're my heart. This is my journey, not yours. He said, wholeness is holiness. That I want your whole body, soul, and spirit. That you just can't be whole in one because if you're just whole in one thing, you're not whole. You're part, you're not whole, amen? And he began to speak to me about wholeness. And he, then he took me into this place of mission and maturity. And friends, I believe the Lord wants us to be a people who are not just in a place of recognizing that God did, but God is doing. And he is asking of us and needing of us in this season to step into what he has. Let's make this meeting legal and turn to some scripture. Amen. Let's turn to James chapter one. I love James chapter one. It's amazing, I used to keep this on my Mac and I still have in my notes. I used to copy and paste where when I was pastoring a church, I used to have other pastors contact me and said, hey, I'm resigning. 
I'm done. I'm done with the, I'm done with the ministry. Do you have a prophetic word for me? And I used to copy and paste this very verse and send it to them. James chapter one, verse two, it says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work so that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Friends, count it all joy. If we are gonna step into a place of mission and maturity, Friends, we have to realize that adversity is working for us, not against us. That what God is, what is happening in our world actually produces something and it's not a problem. And so God wants us to understand, you see, to, to count it all joy, you better make your joy count. If you're going to count your blessings, you need to make your blessings count. You see, to be blessed doesn't mean you're the richest guy in the street. It means everyone else is. Being blessed doesn't mean you have everything. It means everyone else does. And so if you're going to make your joy count, if you're going to count your joy, then you need to make your joy count. Count it all joy, brethren, when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith is producing. You see, what is it producing? I believe that we've come into a place where literally when adversity happens, that we get comfortable, not courageous. You see, as part of my journey in, in getting whole, one of the things that my doctor told me to do was cold plunge. Five degrees of water. And every morning I would get up at 5 a.m., and friends, I realized I found other tongues that I was baptized with when I would jump into that water and all of a sudden I'd be like, and I'm like, like, what are you doing, God? It's like a baptism of ice, not a baptism of fire. Because you see, I realized that it wasn't comfort that was gonna produce something. It was actually courage and discomfort that was gonna produce something. You see, the Lord was leading me into a place of discomfort because He was wanting to produce something. You see, we see in, in the book of Luke that Jesus was led into the wilderness to have an awesome time. No, He was led into the wilderness to be tested. But the Bible says that after that, He came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. I wanna encourage you right now, whatever is against you, friend, God is producing something so you come out in the power of the Spirit. You see, faith isn't proven in moments of comfort, but in moments of courage. Don't give me a faith that needs comfort. You don't need faith in being comfortable. And I feel like sometimes, friends, we, we choose comfortable Christianity instead of courageous Christianity. You see, if we're going to see the power of God, the power of God is needed in comfort. It's needed in courage. The power of God is needed in that which is safe. It's needed in that which is dangerous. Yeah, it is dangerous to share your faith. It is dangerous. Yeah, I think we get it so comfortable in Australia that you could just go up to someone and say, hey, do you know Jesus? And they're just gonna go, I actually know, I don't wanna know, bye-bye. You try that in Iraq. You try that in Saudi Arabia. You try that in the Middle East. You try that in some, like Indonesia and stuff like that. Friends, that is dangerous. And you don't need comfort there, you need courage. And so count it all joy, brethren, when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith is producing. Friends, what is it producing? You see, when you see trials in your life, I love this, that, that God doesn't orchestrate trials, but He uses them. Yeah. Romans 8, 28, God works together everything for good. He'll use every moment for your increase. And this is what I love about the Lord is that every trial, every circumstance he uses for your upgrade. I love what Paul says. He says, friends, this light affliction, which is but for a moment is working for me, not against me, for me, a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. I wanna encourage you, what is working for you in your life and not against you? Because if trials are working against you, then you're gonna find yourself, friend, 
being dissatisfied, distracted, and disheartened. But if you recognize, wait a minute, what is working for me right now is actually producing something. And what is it producing? The Bible says it's producing patience or endurance. I love this word endurance because, friends, you don't need endurance to sit on a chair. You don't need endurance to, to sit watching Netflix. You don't need endurance to eat popcorn. You need endurance on a track. You need endurance in ministry. You need endurance. You see, friends, it's not about a sprint. It's about a marathon. It's not about how far you come. It's about how far you can go. Amen? God is so much about your future. And I believe what the Lord is doing in this church and through this church is building discipleship that is not based in comfort, but in courage. You don't build disciples in comfort. You build disciples that's where it's needed courage, where we're in their moments that we have to live by faith and not by feeling. We have to live by the power of God, not just the principles of God. Am I speaking to somebody? But let faith have its perfect work. You see, we've got to allow whatever's happening to happen. You see, if you short circuit or if you, if you short circuit the promise, friends, you'll short circuit the outcome. If you try allow the process or quick fix the process, then you miss it. You see, every promise has a process. The danger I believe today is we live a McDonald's Christianity that expects it now. And we haven't learned to wait upon the Lord. We haven't allowed the process to be in the promise. You see, every promise has a process. If God wasn't a God of process, then Jesus was, would have come as a man and not as an embryo. I can imagine, like if I was writing the Bible where Jesus would have come in, it would have been his baptism. Peter Jackson would have, would have done it. Michael, whatever his name did, Transformers would have done the, the show. It would have been phenomenal. All of a sudden, Jesus is walking towards John. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That would have been a perfect entrance for Jesus. But God isn't in to the wow. He's into the process. If God wasn't the God of process, we would have trees, not seeds. And so I want to encourage you, friends, when God speaks to you, when God promises you, He gives you a word of promise, but He gives you a walk of process. And that process I found in my life, actually, if the promise is gold, I find that the process has more treasure than the promise does in the end that something has happened in me greater than what I could ever take hold of at the end. I want to encourage you, let the Lord do the process in your life. What is it producing? It's got a process. You see, it's producing something. Every promise has a process. And you know when God speaks? God doesn't speak in fruit. He speaks in seed. And so when you hear the Lord in your life going, hey, this is what I'm going to do, all of a sudden you're like, I'm not seeing anything. Because he didn't speak in fruit, he spoke in seed. You see, when, when God promises you an oak tree, he gives you an acorn. God, it's not what I asked for. No, it's the becoming, not the blessing. And so I want to invite you today to begin to think about them places where you've had a prophetic promise, where, where you've heard the word of the Lord for your life, but you're not seeing anything. Can I encourage you, when God speaks, He speaks in seed. But that seed needs to go into the ground, and it disappears. You see, God always begins in the unseen. You see, I believe if anything begins in the seen, it's of man. Anything that begins in the unseen is of God. Yeah? And so I want to encourage you, what is the process? That let patience have its perfect work so that you may be perfect. I love the word. The word perfect there is wrongly translated here because the word perfect literally means mature. So that you would be mature, complete, and lacking nothing. When you know you lack nothing, you think differently. When you know you lack nothing, you live differently. I remember being in America once and we'd flown into Florida and this pastor couple had messaged us saying they're going through such a hard time. Can you believe it? Pastor's going through a hard time. They're going through such a hard time. And I said, wait till we come there. I'd love to take you for dinner. And so I turned to Sarah and said, honey, we're going to take these guys for dinner. She goes, check the account. 
I said, no. I said, we're going to take them. There's an, it's, there'll be enough there. So I booked this really nice restaurant. And, and before I left, I thought, oh, I better listen to the second Holy Spirit. You see, my wife's the second Holy Spirit. Because if I don't listen to the first, I ge generally better listen to the next one. Amen? And so I thought, I'll give a quick squint of, of my, my account. Guys, I had 67 cents in my account. And Sarah looks at me, she goes, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, nothing. Faith is not defeated. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. They, though I have 67 cents in my account, no one's going to know about it. And we get to that, we get to that restaurant, and I'm walking in, and the, and the waiter's looking at me, and I can, he can tell I'm a runner. He can tell <laughs> I'm shifty. And we sit down, and do you know when you sit down with people and, and, and you begin to try and hint to them, yeah, the salad looks really good. Well, actually, why don't we just go for the breadsticks? Let's do the breadsticks today. Guys, I couldn't even afford the breadsticks. And they're looking at the lobster, they're looking at the champagne. I'm like, oh Lord, help me. Give them a, just tell them right now, is this not the fast I've chosen for you? And the guy comes over, and you know what waiters are like, try to upsell everything. Would you like a starter? Yes, of course they'd like a starter. Just chuck a main course in there. Chuck, a, chuck everything in there, dude, because I got 67 cents. And so they picked the lobster. And so, do you know, I thought, I thought, I'm, I'm just going to go for it. I'll have the filet mignon, but just chuck, chuck the prawns on there. Just chuck the prawns on there, because I'm going to jail. Just chuck the prawns on there. <laughs> I'm going to have the best last meal of my life. <laughs> and I sat there and I am sweating. And they keep bringing this thing and, and it got to dessert time. I thought, I can't take it anymore. So I get up, I walk outside looking for a pond, see if I can find some fish with a, a coin in its mouth. If he did it for Peter, he can do it for me. <laughs> I went to the bathroom and I picked up the, the lid of the toilet to see if there was a drug money underneath or anything. <laughs> was nothing and I'm thinking Lord and all of a sudden I start walking back to the table and the waiter's just beelining me he's coming straight towards me and he knows I'm telling you he must have got a word of knowledge or something and he comes straight up to me he said I need to talk with you and I'm about to confess dude just take an arm I'll wash dishes whatever and he said I say I just need to let you know that your table's been covered What? He said there was a couple that recognized you in the restaurant and has decided to cover you. They've ex actually left extra, so if you'd like, you can have a, a more dessert, whatever you'd like, it's yours. I wanted to kiss the guy. I'm like, are you an angel of the Lord? I go back to the table and I've got to, I've got to skip in my step. I'm like, whew, why? Because all of a sudden, this verse came to me. When you're complete, mature, you and lacking nothing, you live differently. Yeah. How many of us today are living our faith journey as if we've got 67 cents in the account instead of living knowing that He has it all? <laughs> that my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. The problem is, is we're going for breadsticks when God wants us to go for steak. We're going for the small when God wants us to go for the big. We're going after, you see, we're picking up the menu of the kingdom and we're picking Tuesday night prayer meetings instead of Saturday night healing meetings. How am I speaking to somebody? We're trying to pick the insignificant when God wants the significant in our world. I'm telling you something, friends. This building is too small for what God has in your world. The menu of heaven is coming down to you today. And it's time to pick it, amen? What can God do for you? Not what you can do for yourself. This is living in maturity. You see, God wants us to live in maturity, but He needs us to live in, min in mission as well. You see, the Bible says that He's given us the great commission, not the great suggestion. Going to all the world is not a suggestion, it's a commission. And you know, I feel like sometimes we think going into all the world is having to buy a ticket of Filipino airlines and flying 5,000 kilometers away. 
I want to encourage you right now, going into all the world is not about you getting on a plane. It's about getting into your neighbor's life. It's about getting into your boss's life. It's about getting into the person sitting next to your life because that's the world right now. There's about seven, 800 worlds in this room and God wants us to get into them. Mission isn't about inactivity. It's about being available to God. Mission isn't about getting into another country. It's about getting into the purposes of God. You see, I want to encourage you, friends. You see, I take my kids to school, and it's so funny. I get there, and all of a sudden, Susan is coming towards me. I'm like, hey, Susan, and she's got full active wear on. Do you know what active wear is? Lululemon. <laughs> Lululemon. I'm like, hey, Susan, going to the gym? No. Hey, Audrey, how are you doing? Active wear, going to the gym? Oh, no. What? Hey, Bruce, how are you doing? Active wear, when do you go to the gym? I don't go to the gym. What the heck are you wearing active wear for? Why are you wearing active wear if you're not going to the gym? Oh, it's comfortable. <sighs> comfortable doesn't make you active. And I see these people every day. I take my kids to school dressed in this active way and they're not even active. Do you know what that's like? That's like putting on Christ and not living a resurrected life. And there's so many Christians right now, you've put on Christ, but you're not living a resurrected life. Hey, you got Christ on. Are you raising the dead? No, 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 I'm just, just comfortable. Oh, you got Christ on. Are you, are you sharing the gospel? No, no, I'm, I'm just comfortable. Guys, we can't put on active way and be inactive. Like we can't put on Christ and not live a resurrected life. Am I speaking to somebody? You see, we've got to be people of mission as well as maturity. You see, two things that plague every believer is fear and forgetfulness. There are two things the Bible tells us not to do. It says fear not and forget not. And the issue is when we live a comfortable life, the two things that always happen is we fear, everything hits us with fear. And we forget, we forget who we are and we forget who God is. And I wonder today, friends, what in your world are you afraid about? And what in your world have you forgot that God is bigger than that? Is there a circumstance in your life that you've got a big devil but a small God? Is there a... a a circumstance in your life where the problem is louder than the purpose of God in your world. Because the Bible is inviting us into this place of not being a people of fear and a people of forgetfulness, but we remember that we have a great commission, not a great suggestion. That we are a people who realize that God has said, go into all the world. Friends, that's not a suggestion. And it's not a burden. It's a blessing that we get to. We get to get in people's world. We get to demonstrate the gospel. You see, the gospel demonstrated is not demonstrated in comfort. It's demonstrated in courage. That I have to put myself out there. You see, you, you don't need faith to be comfortable. But when you go and share your faith, when you go and heal the sick, I, you see, one of the things that I love to do, the greatest gift you can give anyone is the, is the gift of awareness, sorry, the gift of acknowledgement. I remember a friend of mine come to, to Melbourne and we went to the mall and, and we walk into the mall and, and I just wave, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Next person, hey, how you doing? You know, these little stall, you know, they got stalls in the, in the mall and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And so after about four or five people, my friend turns to me and says, hey, do you know these people? I'm like, no. He's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm acknowledging them. I'm sowing a seed. Paul said, I planted Paulus water, but God gave the increase. This is how we live life. That's not mission. That's comfort. But one of these guys came running up to me and said, hey, do I know you? I said, you don't, but you will. How are you doing? He said, why did you say hello to me? I said, because you were standing there. He said, why would you say hello to me? I said, because you were standing there. And then he said this to me. He said, no one today has even acknowledged I'm here. 
Everyone has just walked past, didn't want to even look at me. And I said, today, friend, you got acknowledged. And I said, it's not actually me acknowledging you, it's God. And you know, in that moment, you could see, like he couldn't compute. What I'm seeing and what I know about religion doesn't equals. What am I to do? You see, most people, when they're presented with life, not religion, go into shutdown because they can't reconcile life and religion. All they know Jesus to be is religion, but you've just presented life. You've just sown a seed. You see, we think we have to hook, line, and sink of people there and then. We have to lead them to Christ. They have to fall on their face and worship God. We get the worship team to come. Friend, no. You see, to, to be a Christian, if God gives you a moment, guys, you don't need permission. You've got purpose. If you're out and about, you don't need the worship team to set an atmosphere. You are an atmosphere. You don't need the intercessors to clear the atmosphere. Your faith clears the atmosphere. You just need to be you because being fully you allows God to be fully Him. And it might be a smile. It might be a salutation. It might be a greeting, but you are sowing a seed. You see, the greatest prophetic word you could ever give could be a smile. The greatest prophetic word you could ever give could be a joy. And you know, next time someone could come along and water that seed, but the Bible promises us that God gives the increase. The danger comes is when we try and complete the deal for God, and God has said, you're not the deal maker, but please don't be a deal breaker. God wants us to be a people of mission and maturity. Am I speaking to somebody? You see, faith without works is dead. And you know, I fear in the body of Christ that that we take words, particularly as we get professional in church, yeah? I remember when I first got saved and someone came up to me and says, hey, Gary, I want to encourage you with John 3.16. And I'm like, wow, what does it say? For God so loved the world. Oh, thanks so much. And then all of a sudden then when you you get a bit older and mature in the church, someone comes up to you with John 3.16 and you're like, dude, can you get a better verse? Oh, we get suspicious, don't we? I remember when I first got saved and someone came up and said, hey, I'm praying for you. And you're like, oh, thanks so much. But now someone comes up and says, I'm praying for you. Like, why? Why? What what are you praying for? What do they see? What do they know? We get suspicious. God hasn't asked us to be suspicious. He's asked us to be supernatural. And you know, the thing is, with this place, all of a sudden, we, we use these words like works. Oh, we, we're not people of works, we're people of faith. We, we take words and, and we, we sort of villainize words in church if it doesn't fit our theology. So I'm not a person of works, I'm a person of rest. No, no, no. Rest is not about your activity. Rest is about your posture. Rest isn't about your hands. Rest is about your heart. You could be the most rested person and, and run a 10 kilometer mile. Hey man, am I speaking to somebody? You could be the most rested person and do a 12-hour shift. Because rest isn't about your hands. Rest is about your heart. It's not about a purpose. It's about a posture. And we've villainized these words to fit into our theology. So when all of a sudden we say faith without works is, oh, well, I don't do works. Well, friends, guess what? You're dead. But you know what the dangerous thing is? If faith without works is dead, then works without faith is dangerous. Let me say it again. Faith without works is dead, but faith works without faith is dangerous. And the, 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 the worst thing we can do, people, is be people of works and not faith because it's dangerous. Because it's about our efforts and not His. You see, we villainize Martha, don't we? We villainize Martha. Well, Mary was the best. Martha wasn't. No, it was that moment that Jesus stepped in. What was needed for that moment was what Mary carried. The next day could have been what Martha carried. And that's why we have to live in tune with God because what is needed in this moment, God, is this needing a time of faith or is it a time for works? Is it a time for me being with you or is it a time of you working through me? That's the spiritual life. That's the kingdom life. Am I speaking to someone? You see, the Matthew 7, 24 says, Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. 
Therefore, if we're people who hear his word and don't put them into practice, we're building on sand. Do you know what sand is? Sand is just rock that's been through stuff. And the danger is, is we build our life on stuff instead of building our life on the rock. We build our life on events instead of his faithfulness. That's what sand is. And eventually, friend, the storms are going to come and it's going to prove what we're building on. You see, faith with our works is dead. Putting works into place is what causes us to have our faith to be genuine. Our works show the genuineness of what we profess. Friends, I believe that we have to move from greater words to greater works. I think we, we don't just need to talk the talk, we need to walk the walk. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the church down the street here, amen? I'm not talking about you guys, I'm talking about the church down the street. But we have to move from greater words to greater works. We can't just talk, we have to see it. People have to see it. And you know, the Bible says in, in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. But we can't live there. We can't just live with confession. We have to move what it says in, in Hebrews 10, 23 in the King James. It said, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful, the promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly like some other people do, but exhorting one another that the day is approaching. I wanna encourage you right now, friends. Your confession is about what God has done. Your profession is about what God is doing. And my challenge is, are you living, is your testimony about God, what God has done or is your testimony what God is doing? I believe in the body of Christ. We've got to add ING to, to what God is doing in our world. God hasn't saved, he's saving. God hasn't healed, he's healing, amen? God is healing, he's not healed, he's healing. And so our confession could be God has healed, but our profession is He is healing. And I want to encourage you, Favor Church, be a people of profession, not just confession. Be a people who see the works of God in everything you do. So that we, as it says, that we provoke one another to love and good works. When I share my testimony, I'm not sharing there for people to go, oh, that's beautiful. I want my testimony to provoke people. To love and good works. God, if God can do it through you, He can do it through me. I want, guys, I want to challenge you right now in 2024 to upgrade your testimony. Upgrade your testimony to what God is doing or what God has done. Upgrade your testimony. Be a person of witness. I love what it says at the beginning. And when, when this power has come upon you, you shall be witnesses. Do you know what a witness is? It's a proof producer. A witness carries evidence. And so I want to encourage you in your profession to go back to a place of seeing God doing, not just done in your world. Friend, I want to encourage you today as I come into Landau time. I believe we've got to get back to seeing the king in the kingdom. I think the, the most dangerous thing right now is we're presenting a king without a kingdom. We're presenting a kingdom without a king. We're presenting a gospel without the goal. and We're presenting Christianity without Christ. And we can't present the kingdom without a king. Because I want to encourage you right now. You know the Holy Spirit was given to us. Not to make us look good. Not make us be good. But I tell you to be who he is. As he is, so we are. And you know, I, I think the, the hardest thing that I see so many times is that people think that the Holy Spirit is there for their leadership when He's actually there for our Lordship. It says, in, it says in 1 Corinthians 12 that no man can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit is in Him. And we think the Holy Spirit is in us so that we can talk in another language, so that we can look good and that we get the tingles on the Sunday. No, that ain't the Holy Spirit, friend. The Holy Spirit is in your life for your Lordship, not just your leadership. And when we understand the Lordship of Christ, friends, we live differently. We live in a way that understands His Lordship. We understand and live in a way that realize the kingdom has a king. And I better get in line. That we realize the gospel has a go. And I don't just, just sit around and get comfortable, but I get courageous. 
Because Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. And so friend, your job isn't salvation, but your job is to go. Am I speaking to someone? Because he's bringing us back to mission and maturity. I want to encourage you friends that God is calling us to put Christ back in Christianity. Christ means anointed one, not annoying one. And I fear sometimes that, that we're more annoying than we are anointed. I'm speaking to myself. I'd love the, word, the keyboardist to come up. But I sense today, friend, that there is a call, there is an invitation in this house to let go of comfort and to step into courage. That we would be a people that people would see the kingdom, not just hear the kingdom. That there would be a people who know that we have a king in our kingdom. That we have a go in our gospel and that we have a Christ in our Christianity. That the anointing breaks the yoke. I want to tell you right now, I, I prophesy this over every person in this place. That when you walk into, into situations and circumstances, you will hear chains break. You will hear prison doors open and you will hear demons flee. Amen. I'm telling you right now, we get, we're going beyond this, this stage show of deliverance. It's getting on my nerves that, that we think we have to have a stage show of deliverance. I'm not giving a stage to a demon because that demon has no authority in my presence. But if it's there, it's going to go. And it ain't going with a scream and it ain't going with a shout, but it's going. Amen. Because when I step in, it steps out. I love it when I travel, people say to me, Gary, when you stay in hotels, do you anoint the doors? Do you, do you go in with oil and, and anoint the bed? And I'm like, no, because when I step in, whatever's there steps out because I am of a heavier kingdom, amen? You see, what is heavier, water or oil? Oil, no, water is. It's called the Lord of Displacement. And if I had a liter of oil and a liter of water, if I poured the liter of water into the liter of oil, guess what happens to the oil? It gets displaced. Are we of a kingdom of darkness or a kingdom of light? Then friend, I wanna tell you right now, when you step in, everything else steps out. Because we are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And so I don't do a shandabanda on my, on my doors. I don't do a shandabanda on the bed, amen? But when I walk in, everything else walks out. And so I want to encourage you, you have authority of a believer. And I believe there's people in this room right now that you've been living in comfortable Christianity, that you've been in a place of comfortable Christianity, that you've been wearing the active wear, but you ain't active, that you've been in a place of going, Lord, I need more but you don't know how to get it. Friend, today there's a call in this house to get back to mission and maturity. Amen? We've got to get back to mission and maturity because the Lord is inviting us to mission and maturity. I'd love the team to come up if they can. I'd love to go into this song, Your Name is Power. Because friends, if His name is power, if His name is life, then we need to walk in it. And I know there's those amongst us today, you're done with comfortable Christianity. And shame has been knocking at your door. Guilt has been knocking at your door. I want to say to you right now, therefore there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Shame has no right in this house. But I'll tell you what does. Activation and impartation. And if you've been in a place right now of comfortable Christianity, if you've been wearing the active wear but are not active, it's like putting on Christ and not living a resurrected life. Before we get in to a place of ministry, friend, you could have walked in here today and you could have said, I'm done with religion. I don't even know what this is about, but there's something of life here today that I need. I'm done with living a comfortable life. I'm done with living a life that has no purpose, that has no vision. I don't even know who I am anymore. 
Friend, you could have walked in here today not knowing Jesus. But something today has connected with your heart. And whoever that guy is with a weird accent, I want that life. I want that in my life. And so while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, friend, there's two people in this house. Those who, who've never put their faith in Jesus or you've put your faith in a form of Jesus that's not life. Friend, if that's you today, in a moment I'm going to ask you to quickly raise your right hand and say, Gary, that's me. I want to know that Jesus. I want to know that life. Friend, if that's you, just put your hand up right now. Anyone in this auditorium, if that's you, just raise it up. I want to give an opportunity for you to come to Christ. Your heart is racing right now, knowing you need to make a decision. If that's you, just put your hand up. If you're here and you believe the form of Jesus, you may have given your life to Him in times past, but you've got cold. You got complacent and you got comfortable. If that's you, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. God bless 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 you. Friends, in a moment, we're just going to pray a prayer. And then those who raise your hand, the team member is going to come and just chat with you about the decision you've just made. Why don't we pray all this prayer together? Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I'm sorry for turning away for the things that I've done. I ask you to forgive me, to come into my life, renew my heart, renew my mind. Today, Jesus, I give you my all. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's welcome these guys. God bless you. Wow. I've got one word for you. Grab A. Grab A. Grab A. Grab A. Grab A. Yeah. He is faithful. He is faithful. Amen. Now, friend, I want to speak to those who've got comfortable, who found themselves in comfortable Christianity. And you want to find yourself in a place of mission and maturity. If that's you right now, I want you to come it's down to the front. I'm going to pray for every person. Come. Just come. If that's you, you've got into comfortable Christianity and you want to step into mission and maturity. Friend, I want you to come right now. We're done playing church. No longer are we going to play active way. We're going to put Christ on and live a resurrected life. Friends, this isn't a place of shame. This is a place where God wants to do business with your heart. Because His name is power. His name is healing. His name is life. Wow. Just come. Just come. Move more forward. Just move more forward. Guys, I'll be vulnerable with you. These moments when the Holy Spirit leads me in these moments, I'm out, on the, I'm out of the board on the water. I much prefer moving in ministry in the prophetic, but there's times the Lord puts a, a charge in my heart to activate, to bring people to a place of putting on Christ and living a resurrected life. That we would be a people of courage and our comfort. 
His name is power. His name is healing. His name is life. And you might have come forward today and you've been wearing shame. You've been wearing condemnation. You've been wearing guilt. You've been wearing things of your past. I want to tell you right now, it's time to take off the old man and put on Christ. It's time to take off the things of the flesh and to put on Christ that we may walk in the Spirit. Amen. If you're still in your seat, I want you to raise your hand and, and start to pray for these people. Jesus. Holy Spirit just whispered to me, there's at least one has come forward that you've been contemplating taking your life. I'm not going to shame you. I'm not going to point you out. But I just decree over your life right now that them thoughts cease right now in Jesus' name. That God's plan for your life is way greater than your thoughts are thinking right now. That the destiny that's on your life is way greater than the thoughts you're thinking right now. And I just decree in your heart that God would get loud in your world. That His Word would get loud in your world. That every thought, that every, every captive thought, that He would take captive in Jesus' name. My brother took his life at 22 years of age. The hardest thing for me was a couple of years before, I saved a friend from suicide through a word of knowledge. And I got so angry with God that why could I do it for a friend but not my brother? Friend, life, kingdom life is worth living. I'm not saying you it's easy, but it's worth it. And you're worth it. And I just declare over your life right now, life and life abundant in Jesus' name. Father, as these have come forward, I just decree over them right now, courage, 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 courage in Jesus' name. Father, that you would strip them right now of the claws of the flesh, that you would strip them right now of the works of the flesh. And Lord, you would bring such a clothing of Christ, that Lord, you would bring such resurrected life, that Christ in them is the hope of glory. Lord, that you would ignite a mission and maturity in their hearts that would set them apart for such a time as this, in Jesus' name, that you would set them apart for such a time as this, that no longer are we playing church, but Lord God, we're allowing the kingdom to be played out through us. Wow. I declare and I decree breakthrough in every heart and every home right now in Jesus' name. That we're a people of the Spirit. That we're a people of the Spirit. That we're a people of the Spirit. I just declare. There's no failure when there's a Father. And every place a feeling of failure. Right now, Lord, I just lift that off in Jesus' name. There's no failure when there's a father. But there is restoration. And every feeling of failure gets lifted right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I decree and declare 
This is a holy place. I want every person that's come forward. Friends, I'm going to invite you to do something right now. I'm going to invite you to take off your shoes. Because the place you are, this isn't a platform, this is an altar. And the Lord whispered this to me at the beginning of last year. He said, Gary, fame falls on platforms, but fire falls on altars. And I'm building altars. And I'm doing away with platforms. I'm building altars and I'm doing away with platforms. What is the one thing that got took away from us during COVID was the altar. God's restoring the altar. God's restoring the prayer altar. God's restoring the generosity altar. God's restoring the discipleship altar. God's restoring the transformation altar. God's restoring the salvation altar. God's restoring the worship altar. Altars are being restored in our life right now. And I declare over your life that you are the altar of God. And fire falls on altars. Fire falls on altars. Jesus, right now. Jesus. Lord, those who have come forward. God, they need healing and breakthrough. Lord, we just release that right now in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for wholeness. Thank you for wholeness. Thank you for wholeness. Thank you for wholeness. need the lights to come back in this section if I can, please. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every thought taken captive in Jesus' name. Every thought taken captive in Jesus' name. Every thought taken captive in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. There's a guy right in front of me with a cap. You got a white cap on. The whole time I'm speaking, that's you, my friend. What's your name? Krish. Krish, I'm just keeping you in this word. The wrestle is over. The wrestle is over. And you've been wrestling, not just with God, but you've been wrestling with where you're at and what you're doing. And the Lord is bringing an end to the wrestle. And He's bringing a blessing. And the blessing is about your identity and who you are, not what you're not. And for the last 18 months to two years, you've been trying to apply who you are. And it's like you people are not seeing who you are. But it's like they're seeing who you're not. And I just see favor coming to you. I know we're in favor, but I see favor coming to you in the area of, of profession, in the area of employment, in the area of seeing God actually favor you because it's been a wrestle and it's been a struggle. And I just see like God turning application into appointments. I see God turning them things that, that you try to press in for, but it's like every door seems to close. God says, this is the year of the open door. Lord, I thank you for the skill that you've given him. But Lord, let the favor talk more than the skill talks right now in Jesus' name.
Father, let the skill talk more than the, wow. Let the favor talk more than the skill talks right now. In Jesus' name. Just raise your hands up, my friend. I'm just going to declare the fullness of God's favor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I just keep seeing the name. and I, It might be Ali or Ale or Yale. It's A-L-L-Y. Who's that, please? Is that you? Just put your hands up, honey. God says, my confidence is going to be your assurance. That the places that you felt the least confidence, God's got the most assurance for your life. And you've been in a place, like I can see like eight months of like just trying to work things out, trying to come into a place of making sure everything is, is right. And God says this isn't about being right. It's about being available. That God's got your future. He wants you to enjoy your presence. God says, I've got your future, but I need you to enjoy your present. And God says, it's not about planning. And you've been like, even this last three weeks, you've been sitting with like girls and you've been planning and planning. And, is this right? And you've been planning and planning and, and there's two things that, that keep coming up. It's like you haven't got enough and you don't feel enough. And God says, honey, you are more than enough and you've got enough. And God is releasing confidence in your heart right now to know that He has got your future. That it's not about getting it wrong. It's not about trying to be right. It's about knowing that He is faithful who called. And He who called you is faithful. And so Lord, I just lift off every stress Lord, every place of anxiety, every place that she feels bound in. Lord, I just ask you to release right now favor. That's what's on this house, favor. So we release it, amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Lord. There's a guy, who I, ch I shook his hand as I walked in and, and you, I haven't, when you shook my hand, it hasn't left me. And I think he's, he's an older gentleman. It's, his name's Rock or something. Where are you by, my friend? Where's he by? Give us a wave. He's outside. When he comes back in. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm going to go into this section here. Who, someone in this section, you, you work in like legal but you're not, a, you're not a lawyer, you're not a, le a loyal person, but you're like working legal. Who's that place? Like a secretary, you're working secretary stuff. That's you? Wow. Thank you, Lord. Wow. You're a paralegal. <laughs> Isn't God good? Oh, just lift your hands, honey. Father, right now, this is what the Lord says to you, that you are more mature beyond your years. And you look down on yourself so much because comparison has almost become your culture. And God says, you, I don't want you to be a person of comparison, but I want you to be a person of courage to know I've got you where I've got you because I'm taking you where I'm taking you. 
And God is going to bring such, wow. I just see even this, it's not even a door. It's like God's opening gates to you. And it's like gates with keypads. And it's like you have to put a number in. But God says, I'm going to give you the passwords to purpose. I'm going to give you passwords. And I, I see like there's a card you have that it doesn't, it's not working. It's not working. And God says, I'm going to open doors that haven't worked before, but are going to work now. And your resume is about to be seen. Your resume is about to be seen. And I want to encourage you, honey. Don't sell yourself short. But know that God is in your corner. That He has set you apart. What's your name? Nicola. Nicole. Father, I just declare blessing on Nicole right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we just release blessing that breaks through, blessing that builds, blessing that sets apart, blessing that brings the fullness of promise and purpose on her life right now. And Lord, I bless her with favor, favor in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. name. Let me shake your hand again. When you shook my hand, wisdom, wisdom came like I've never felt. The sword of the Lord. Man, you're a man of the Word. You're a man of spirit, but you're a man of the Word. And I saw you being used to, to equip, being used to to bring such freedom and truth out of His Word to people. And it's like there is a discipleship anointing on you. But it's not in a way of of lording or leading. There's like this way of undergirding, coming alongside. And I just hear the Father say, Robert, thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for your loyalty. Because in your past, people weren't loyal to you. And you've chosen not to sow the fruit that was dealt to you, but you've worked in the opposite spirit. That you've chosen not to just be a man of the word, but a man of his house. When David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. My friend, the mantle that's on your life, you could be anything in the kingdom. But you've chosen to be a doorkeeper. You've chosen, not ambition. You've chosen to be humble. And today God honors you. When he said to Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. You've just purposed in your heart to be a stone that God builds with. And I see it on your heart, Rock. And so, Lord, I honor this man. Father, I speak blessing. And, Lord, I just declare right now, every place of dishonesty, every place that he's been dishonored, every place that, Lord, is sown dishonesty towards him every place that Father God has been disloyal to him all them fruits of the past Lord I declare right now that Lord you're working for him a far more exceeding and eternal way to go Jesus wow Father I say let wisdom increase because Lord, wisdom builds. Wisdom builds. And Lord, I thank you. You're building with this guy. Wow. And you, you're just like Mr. Miyagi. 
wax on, wax off. It's like this place of, I just see it on you. God, your, your gentleness to encourage young men in God. Your gentleness to, to make sure that they don't go through the battles that you've gone through. You're a man of honor, my friend, and I honor you today. The Lord honors you. And I don't know why I need to do this, but I feel to salute you. He honors you because you're an honorable man. He trusts you because you're trustworthy. He celebrates you because every fiber of your being celebrates others. But today, every fiber of your being is being celebrated. Can I hug you? God bless you, my friend. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. Jesus. How many people feel His kindness? Lord, we love Your kindness. We love Your faithfulness. Lord, we love your gentleness. Lord, we know you come as fire, but Lord, you come as a dove. And so Lord, I ask you now that you would come. There's a lady, you got your hand, you just had your hand up and you've got a denim jacket on just like me. I could say you're not Asian, so you're Caucasian. <laughs> Amen. I'm coming to you. What's your name, honey? Valeria. Valeria, just put your hands out for me. Wow, Jesus. Things didn't work out like you planned. Life didn't go the way you expected. What you feel was ripped from you, God says, I'll restore. But not in a way you expect. Because I'm a God that sees, a God that knows, and a God that cares. the cry of your heart even coming into 2024 is God I need to leave the past behind I need a fresh year I can't allow this year just to be another year and I just want to declare over you hun, as your name begins with a V correct so your year is going to begin with a V called victory called vindication called value And you don't need to live in disappointment. You don't need to live in disheartenment. God says, today is a day where my virtue becomes your value. Where my virtue becomes your value. And you can trust Him. It's hard. Because it's like this whole area you trust God like no one else. But there's this area. It's like, God, I can't trust. I trust you, but I can't trust. And God says, trust me. Trust me. This makes sense? Just trust me. Because I'll, I'll finish what I started. I will finish what I started. And failed ventures are not failed adventures. 
Yeah? False starts and not no starts. God is faithful to complete that which He started. And you can trust Him. And I see you, literally, your wings being unclipped in this season. Of instead of feeling caged, God says, you're, un- you're released. God says, I release you. I release you. I release you. Yeah, I release you. <laughs> wow, I release you. And Lord, I just declare right now a releasing in Jesus' name. Father, what didn't work out, Lord, you're going to work out in her world. Father, I just declare blessing over you right now. Yeah? I want to just declare over your life generational blessing, not generational curse. There's something of fear that comes down a generation. But I want to declare over you, there's something of faith that comes down your generation. And we speak generational blessing over you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we just declare as well, Father God, that you would restore and bring restitution to every area that has been robbed or pillaged by the enemy. And we just declare restoration and restitution right now in Jesus' name. That we can truly say, I went to the enemy's camp, but I took back everything he stole from me. Amen. I took back everything he stole. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Do you have a son? A daughter. I just see, are you married? Where's he by? At home. God's going to restore. Yeah? (laughs) I just saw a guy standing right next to you. And I'm going to declare it's not now, but it's coming. When that man will be standing right there. For the day is coming. And is now. And you know in the Welsh revival, as people worship God, husbands would walk in and stand with their wives. Can we purpose in our heart, favor the 2024 is a year where complete families come to church. This is the seed we're sowing right now. Because if you want to see it, you've got to seed it. I still can't get away from this guy I'm seeing. Lord, Holy Spirit, we just declare right now that you would just invade. That, Lord, you would bring your presence that draws And while religion is driven away, your spirit will draw close. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're so good. You're so good. Put our hands out to the Father. Father, we just thank you that you are kind, that you are faithful. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Today, Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, we receive today everything that you have and everything you are in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. God bless you guys and thank you for listening.
Amen. Can we honor Pastor Gary? Wasn't that beautiful? Amen. Do you feel the presence of the Lord that's here? It's wonderful. People putting their shoes back on. I still got my shoes off. Listen, we're going to close our service with just this is beautiful sense of the presence of the Lord, but we've got a couple things we need to share with you. Firstly, if you've been to our church, you'd know that we really honor the men and women of God that, that preach and sow into our church. And so we're going to honor Pastor Gary. On the back of your seat, there's a black envelope. It says love offering on it. You can give into that by cash and put it in our giving box, or you can scan the QR code and, and go and give online directly. But we really want to honor uh, Pastor Gary, especially those that came yesterday as well. Uh, you know, this whole weekend, he's just been blessing. And just in case you didn't realize, so Pastor Gary, you don't know because Rocky wasn't at our staff on Friday, but Rocky's, Rocky, Mr. Wisdom teacher guy that you prophesied over, he's actually our main teacher in our Bible college and in our grow and equipping. But you didn't know that. Uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a plan. Everybody, it's not a plan. Uh, Rocky wasn't there on Friday and missed it and you didn't realize he actually doesn't even know that Rocky's on staff and that's literally his job isn't that cool uh, the cynic will say it was a plant we don't have enough emotional capacity to plant we're just trying to get through today amen so listen I want to encourage you we're gonna, just going to pray for the offering then I'm going to tell you four things and I'm going to let you go Lord I just pray right now we pray a blessing over Pastor Gary God as we give into him, his wife, his kids ministry today. God, I pray, let it be blessed. Lord, I pray that as we bless the prophet, we would receive a prophet's reward. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Come on one more time. Let's just honor. Thank you. Beautiful. Hey, there's four things I need to tell you. We're going to put them up on the screen so that you can see it right now. The first is this. We've got worship auditions for favorite kids. That's going to be Sunday, March 17, after the 5.30 p.m. service. That's next Sunday. So if you love worship, you're not a weirdo, and you can get an MBI clearance, you can sign up for favorite kids worship. Saturday, March 23, we've got serve day. Uh, we've got two time slots available. This is where we want to go and serve our community. We're going to have more information on that. You can find it up on this. Uh, in the website. Easter, Baptism Sunday. We've got Presence Night on the Friday, Good Friday of Easter. And we've got baptisms all day Sunday. It's going to be at the Metro Tent because Crown's not available that way. And then Favor Conference. Sign up soon because we're going to run out of places and it's going to be wonderful. Amen. Amen. Who here wants a week of favor and blessing? Why don't you stand, lift your hands. Keiko, newly married, why don't you come up here? She's going to pray for you. Come on, lift your hands as we pray for blessing. All right, everyone. Thank you, Lord, for an amazing Sunday, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you moved and worked in every single one of our lives, Lord Jesus. I